Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In today's video we're going to be reviewing Hyperdimensional Neptunia Rebirth 3. The game is a remake from the original Neptunia Victory game and was released by Idea Factory and Compile Heart. The game was released in 2015 and was also released for the PlayStation Vita. So let's go on with this game's review shall we? The game's story is a continuation from the previous game and this time has Neptune managing to somehow warp herself into another dimension. In this dimension, Neptune finds that while things sort of look the same, they aren't. Everything's got that odd old 80s retro style vibe to it. She also learns of a group calling themselves the Seven Sages, who plan to take over the world's game industry. And long story short, it's up to Neptune and the gang to save the world. Again. However, this time it's not also just her world, it's also the New Dimensions world as well, that she and the group have to save. The game's story is a good one, and if you are so a current Neptunia fan, then just like me, you're going to love all the little odd nods here and there about past gaming consoles, places, and various other references. I especially liked how in the New Dimension, Vert's Lean Box has an old style Xbox console layer, and even has the oddly unreleased X looking console version design, which just never happened and never got released. It's a good story, with the usual plot twist here and there, and with some also added extra emotional sections to boot. It's a great story that doesn't feel boring at any point, and it's also full of the usual Neptunia charm and humour that we all know and love so much about the game series. The characters has the usual gang returning, only it's not the usual gang, this time it's Neptune and Nepgear adventuring alongside with the other dimensions for Noir and Blan, who seem the same but who are slightly different personality wise, but again because it's Neptune and because she's there for a long period of time, she basically ends up bringing everyone together and making them like themselves from her dimension that she's from. The CPU candidates also make a return, alongside with characters such as Mages, Cave and various others. So with over 20 plus characters to play as, you won't be getting bored anytime soon. Each one of these characters has their own moves and special abilities, so each character as a whole gets to shine as their own character, rather than just coming across as a type of clone or reuse character which a lot of other RPG companies just seem to use to fill ranks out these days. The cast all have a huge mix of personalities, ranging from the quiet and strange to the loud and the confusing. Either way, there's bound to be someone you're going to like here, and that you'll probably end up maining with in your party a lot. If you have played previous Neptunia games before, then realistically you should know what to expect when it comes to this world's characters, and if you haven't and you're new to the series, then welcome, sit down and pick your waifu. Now with this being a Rebirth title, the gameplay is now improved upon from what it originally was in its original release. The new combat system really helps advance the game and bring much needed improvement to the game's combat system as a whole, and just makes it that much more enjoyable than it was the first time around. The game's style is out of a visual novel slash RPG type game. Now if you're a Neptunia fan, then you know what you're going to expect. If you're new to the series however, the gameplay itself is a mix of 3D for the game's combat system and while you're exploring, whilst the interaction between the characters is on that of a 2D style. You can now also enhance the game's dungeons as well by our plans that you can find, and by collecting the right materials, you can then make levels either much much easier or much much harder, depending on your style of gameplay and how you want to play. When it comes down to the game's combat system itself, as in a previous Neptunia game, you get the ability to attack, defend, use special abilities and EX moves. The devs also went to town with the X moves, as practically most characters can now use combo moves. If you have ever played Chrono Trigger and loved how the characters did special combo moves together, well, you get that here, but now you get loads more choices to do them with. In the previous Neptunia game, you could only do a few EX combo moves together. However, in this release, Blan can team up with Noir Vert or Neptune, Ram can team up with Nepgear, Vert can team up with Neptune or Nepgear, all together, and basically, you get a whole range of combo EX moves to choose from in this release.
appearance wise, the graphics basically look the same as Neptunia 2, Sister's Generation. However, I think some sections were improved upon, but generally things do sort of look the same. The 2D sections are beautifully animated, and the voice actors did a great job as per usual. However, I did notice a slight lack of English dubs upon this release, as opposed to the previous game, which just comes across as rather odd. It could just be me, but I do swear that there's more English voice acting in Sister's Generation than in this game. Being a port of the Vita and coming to the PC also means the added extra improvement of the graphics as well. It's not a huge difference that you're going to notice instantly, but it is something that you will notice in slight places here and there, and it now just makes the game look slightly better being on PC. Thankfully, you won't also need a beast of a graphics card to run this game either, as I had a friend who played this on his old gaming laptop, and that's got something like a GTX 460 in it I think, and he said that the game ran rather smoothly without any issues or flaws. I myself ran this game on my downstairs PC that had my GTX 970 installed, and I didn't encounter one single issue. Graphics ran smooth, without any fault, and just basically ran perfectly all the way through for me. If you are an anime manga fan, then the game's graphics will appeal to you, as it's essentially you playing that style of game. However, if you're not a fan of that genre, then this might not appeal to you, and it might be best you go and play a different title, as this is heavily anime manga based. If you have ever played a Neptunia game before, then you know what to expect from the world of game industry. It's game industry, so you're going to get levels from past previous games, only slightly changed in a few places here and there. For anyone who doesn't understand what I'm talking about, in the Neptunia series you generally have returning levels from past games that make a return in the latest and current release of the franchise. Now this is done for various reasons and some people do and don't like it, but I myself do like it. If Neptune lives in Planet Tune, for example, I would expect to find the same places upon her return to the next game in the franchise, unless something happened like the whole area gets destroyed, or that those places get completely wiped off the map, or something as drastic as that. Various areas from past game make a return, alongside a brand new one showing up for the first time in this release. The thing I did find strange however was that I don't remember any snowy stages at all in this game. I think every stage from the past Neptunia games is here, but for some reason there doesn't seem to be a single snowy stage, or not one that I can remember which I do just find quite very odd. The stages themselves are quite pretty and very well done and beautifully well rendered. If you're wanting to buy the game and are a Neptunia fan, then it's pretty much a gone for conclusion that you've already played 1 and 2. With this in mind, then 3 is definitely worth picking up, as it continues on from the story and also leads into 7, aka Victory 2, so you're going to want to continue the game's story if you're already deeply involved in the game's series and its characters. If you are new to the series however, and are looking at the game and wondering if you should buy it or not, then I would advise against it, because picking this game up and playing it from the start will just leave you confused as to what's actually going on. I'm not saying you can't just pick up and play this game, I'm just saying that if you did, then a lot of the game's jokes and references will be lost on you, such as Netgear falling on someone's head. This series is a series that if you're thinking of joining, then it's best you start from the first game. I mean, you wouldn't watch The Two Towers without watching The Fellowship of the Ring first, would you? The game's asking price on Steam is also rather high for just one game, when realistically you could just wait for Idea Factory to do a bundle pack. Generally what happens is Idea Factory have a sale, and they bundle Rebirth 1, 2 and 3 together for a decent price. However, if you purchase this game on its own when it's not on sale, then it's worth more than the three of the games together on a bundled sale. So logic anyone? It's a fantastic game, and I myself got around 80 hours out of it, and that was with me doing all the side quests and special missions. While it's not perfect and it does have its flaws in places, I still did enjoy this game a hell of a lot, and it does nothing but bring feels and smiles to my face, which sadly a lot of AAA titles just don't do these days. Great game, 
good price, good cast of characters, funny situation that the gangs usually get themselves involved in. I would definitely recommend this game. The only thing I can fault about the game is that I did feel that there was a lack of English dubbing as opposed to the previous game, and also the ending itself left me rather a tad incomplete I guess would be the right word. At the time it didn't make much sense, but that was because the next game carries on from this and introduces us to Adult Nep, and how at the end of Rebirth 3 it's her who we're not seeing but who are being introduced to. It's hard to explain, but if you have played the game yourself, then you would understand what I'm trying to put across. So if you are new to the series, then I would say get this on a bundle pack and start with 1. If you already have Neptunia 1 and 2, and 1 and 3, then I would suggest that you check out eBay or various other websites, as it's a lot cheaper than what Steam's current standard asking price is. If you still think that's too much, you could always just wait until the bundle pack gets released and gift 1 and 2 to a friend and introduce them to the series. Either way, you can't go wrong with a good game like this, so I definitely would recommend it. It brings nothing but happiness and smiles. Well, that's it for this review guys, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and please subscribe!